Very perfect. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, so good afternoon to all. I'm sure some of us are connecting from uh, Cameroon. Some Is anybody from outside Cameroon? We had some candidates who came in and uh, somehow they are out. All right, so we apologize a little bit for, for the delay. Maybe some of us, all of us actually came late because I was connected 15 minutes before. And uh, I saw that some people had difficulty uh, logging in. So the webinar session is very easy. It was well configured. So you just install your Zoom and uh, all you needed was just click and you link in. We didn't uh, allow passwords, logins by passwords and so many other uh, proprietary rules. So quite easy. All right, it's a free webinar and it's an information session. Uh, also serves the purpose of updating you and getting your questions clarified or answers to any question you may have on the subject. So the project economy, digital economy, this is what is transforming industry today. This is what uh, we have um, as trending certifications in industry. So the career trend that we have around the world today is predominantly dominated by project management, IT, and uh, some other industry certifications. So today we would highlight some of the uh, relevant uh, competencies that lie in the project management domain and uh, the competencies that go with the different certifications and career trajectories for individuals who are aiming to go high in corporate executive positions to be able to lead projects, what scale of project, whether it's national, international, or what dimension of project. So, and the project industry has grown very, very uh, uh, much in terms of volume, in terms of relevance, in terms of uh, best practices, in terms of certifications as well. The different range of certifications that you have on project management alone could span close to 50 and still counting. So we have different bodies offering different certifications. And today we're going to uh, position us with the PMI certifications in project management and why they are very relevant. Before I go ahead, I would like to highlight, uh, let's say, let me hear from each, of, each and every one of us connected. It may be an informal uh, two-minute session for us to get ourselves introduced. But I know if we were over 100 of us, we wouldn't have this kind of introduction, okay? So anybody from outside Cameroon? All right, I can't get anybody from outside Cameroon yet. No signal there, okay. We have Mr. Luanga. Mr. Luanga, you're connected from here, which is your city. Could you introduce uh, yourself a little bit? Yes, uh, thank you very much, sir. I am uh, Kongbunri Luanga, as the name is really, uh, I I work okay. with an NGO in, uh, in, in, uh, in the Northwest region of Cameroon, but uh, because of the Amazon crisis, I've been I've been displaced to Bafusam. So, okay. so, so I, I am a student. I am also a student. Uh, okay, good. Uh, studying MBA. Oh, that's perfect. Uh, so you desire what is your expectation with uh, PMI or PMP? You heard about PMP? Yeah, yes, I. In fact, I have been reading some books uh, in preparation because I I want that by the end of this. By the end of this year, I should, I should get myself certified. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I like to hear that. That's perfect. I'm sure today's uh, session will highly, uh, will put you across, uh, giving you the, 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 the map on how you're going to achieve that objective very easily. Uh, first of all, you will appreciate uh, the background of the industry and the different certifications and the power of the PMP. All right, so we have, uh, thank you very much for coming, and I would like to have Mr. Nchet Dumu give us any updates on, on his expectation and where he's uh, connecting from. Maybe before Mr. Ndumu, Mr. Tanga Roland, who is very open. Mr. Ndumu is still muted. Okay, so go on, Mr. Tanga. Hello, Mr. Tanga. Are you getting me? All right, Daniel, could you help out with Snake? Do you have uh, his contact, Snake? No, Atanga, Atanga is back, yeah. 
No, I mean snake. Somebody's connected S N E E K. So I will, no, he's no, no. not. I don't he's have not his audio contact. enabled. Okay, uh, yeah, enabled. Right. He's enabled. No, he's not. Yeah. All right, fine. Mr. Roland is not. Is not. He's or he's already there. Okay. Yeah. okay, good. Let's go on, Mr. Longa. You just have to follow up. Thank you again. Um, we would take thirty minutes because our time is supposed to be from uh, 12 to 1.30, and then we have a little break, transition to two, because the French session will be taken off from 2 p.m. All right, so here we, we go with uh, the uh, PMI, looking at uh, the, the industry perspectives, as far as certifications, as far as project management is concerned. So we have, to look at introductions. We have career trajectories and the different uh, relevance for the different certifications. We also cover, uncover the value of project management for individuals, for organizations, for governments, economies, for government, and, and see exactly why projects fail and um, highlight the, the blueprint for success uh, in projects, why projects fail. All right, so, Lastly, we would uh, touch on our training philosophy and standards. And in case that will benefit you, we'll tell you further on how, they, how to attain the PMI certifications and other certifications that are offered in the project management uh, industry. Okay. So in industry today, we have the PMI Institute as the project management institute standing out uh, as a not a not-for-profit professional membership association. It is ranked one of the leading uh, uh, accreditation bodies for project management worldwide with over millions of members and uh, championing advocacy collaboration across the whole world. And uh, in terms of footprints, you could have close to a million members now. This is a this is a, a three-year back statistics, okay? So we have close to a million plus PMP. In fact, PMI has clocked one million PMP certified professionals around the world. So just PMP and uh, PMI has more than PMP certifications. We have close to eight and above certifications that we would discover. All right, so we have volunteers. Volunteers are the lifeblood of uh, PMI. So volunteers power the project management organization worldwide. And we have local chapters and we have associations distributed in all, almost every country. I will not say all countries. So Cameroon has a local chapter and uh, we are part of the board for the chapter. Okay, going further, we would see the, <clears throat> the historical milestones in terms of evolution. From 1969, the PMI Institute was founded. And in uh, 1984, we could see the PMI uh, offered the first credential PMP. So PMP actually came in 1984. So the interesting thing is that the person who certified in 1984, is he still as current and relevant, as updated as the person who certifies in 2020? Yes, PMI has a certification maintenance upgrade mechanism. So we will discover that where individuals who, uh, who are certified earn what you call professional development units. You have to score 60 uh, and report 60 PDUs over a, a three year period to maintain your certification. And to do that, it means you are upgrading yourself. You are actually staying current, abreast with industry trends and best practices. All right, so going further, we would um, <clears throat> point on, the, of course, PMI Cameroon was founded in 2014. Good. And um, we would see that with uh, project management, project management is not new. We are not studying something that just came from the white man. <laughs> all right, so all of us have somehow been involved or behind initiatives that are described as projects. But then you see the practices, okay? Getting, getting uh, very formal, getting very standard and getting, uh, gaining a worldwide recognition in terms of standards. Um, that is much a different story. So that is where we come in to look after the standards. Certification is about looking after the standards. 
seeing what are the best ways to do projects. And uh, is there any common one way to do a project? I mean, can you say, okay, can you vet that there is one formula? Well, there would be uh, possible uncountable me uh, methodologies, but somehow there is one standard that PMI assumes is the best for managing projects. All right, so looking at antiquity, we would see that the monuments of time have been erected through individuals giving themselves to what we call project management practice. So like the space missions, recently US launched uh, uh, SpaceX um, into the, I mean, a new, a new um, uh, satellite, uh, satellite project. So that program, they just launched it last week on the 30th. So going into space, that's another level, okay? So from the previous 2001, uh, is it 2000 or 2001, uh, space station that they launched, and the uh, 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 US, US launched the, the space station uh, where all the world, China, Russia, and uh, so many countries have been carrying out research, biological research, scientific research from, <clears throat> from different, different uh, dimensions. All right, so those are projects, space missions, pyramids of Giza, Great Wall of China, scientific drug dis discovery. These are the kind of uh, things that have marked our century, okay, the 19th, 20th century. And uh, projects are increasingly becoming the trend of our day. Okay, So huge millions and billions are being invested in projects. But somehow, you wouldn't say that all of these projects uh, meet their expectations or uh, are successful totally. And that is why we come in to examine, okay, we we'll look at why these projects uh, don't meet. Some projects don't meet their original intentions by, uh, let's say, a deviation of 45%, some even 80, 68%, maybe from uh, budget, budget uh, non-meeting budget requirements some non-meeting uh, schedule requirements and all of that. Okay, so these are the kind of things that project management could achieve, at least. A sample industry look on types of projects. Today, we see that with the, the move from traditional project management practices, we now have innovative practices that have emerged, but PMI actually was the body that uh, fine-tuned research towards standardizing what we call the core body of knowledge that would be applicable for project practitioners around the world. And when they came up with that body of knowledge, they unified it, and that's what they call the PMBOK, okay? So the PMBOK, so far the PMBOK is uh, in the sixth edition version now, version six. And uh, version six comes with the power uh, a, a, a power combination with Agile. So you would appreciate that the SIF is really a fast and a far development from the fifth edition. Well, we, some of us got certified in the fifth edition that was launched in 2013 and the SIF edition was revised and brought into light by 2017, late 2017. Okay, so today, uh, we are looking at the certifications which mark um, the Project Management Institute. First of all, like uh, my colleague just told me, uh, he would be working towards certifying before December. Yes, because PMI is working on changing the exam content, the exam content by 31st of December you would have written the last, um, your PMP based on this current exam uh, structure. So by the 2nd of January, 2021, a new PMP exam structure would have been launched. And that will require very much um, a different approach entirely, which we're going to see how that goes. Okay, so the PMBOK is a standard. It describes a standard. It doesn't talk about methodology. It is not a methodology. PMI doesn't champion methodologies. But the PMBOK is um, a core body of knowledge that includes both
proven traditional practices that have worked over time, and also uh, emerging practices, what we call innovative practices that um, uh, spring coming to light, okay? So currently, uh, people who get certified PMP, they look forward to creaming their potentials, I mean, their PMP with uh, other um, certifications like Agile, like Scrum, like uh, many others, of course. So Agile Scrum, mm -hmm. these are the new innovations because uh, project management has evolved. And if you're going to look at the traditional way, it may be limited in some areas of meeting up with customer expectations. All right, so here we have the PMBOK as a standard. First and foremost, like I said, PMI is championing the development of standards. It wouldn't pride itself in giving you a methodology. Methodology is tight and specific to a particular discipline. Okay, so maybe a methodology could be a procedure. It could be a way of doing work in a particular department or a company. So, but a standard is much open worldwide recognized or worldwide recognition and a standard uh, embraces many methodologies okay so a standard gives uh, structure to all forms of methodologies so it is on the standard that you can de derive your own methodology or tailor your own methodology so that is a good thing because pmi by this says that pmi is not limited to any industry practice or limited to any methodology uh, that may be applied to specific industries and not all. All right, so that's why the PMI certifications are portable. They are portable, that means they are transferable, that means they, 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 they cross industry, that means when you are certified PMP, good. You see number two here, transferability. PMI certifications not tied to any one specific methodology, industry, or region. A PMI certification can move and adapt with your career. That is the interesting credibility about this. Now, number one is that it gives you credibility. That's why the PMI certifications stand out much different. They provide an unbiased and reliable means to validate your domain knowledge and professional experience. For over 30 years, PMI has offered certifications and is a globally recognized leader in the industry. So PMI certifications give you the competitive advantage and uh, be making you more marketable, more strategic, and uh, you'll be able to exercise your full leadership potentials. And uh, you'll be able to apply technical knowledge on project management effectively. Now you have uh, the next one, it gives yeah, a commitment, yeah. emphasizes your commitment to professional growth. And that's what I told you about the PDUs. Earning 60 PDUs in three years maintains your, uh, puts your, your PMP growth curve upwards, okay? so. PMP or PMI expects that every professional should keep abreast with the changing uh, nature of the industry that is shaped by several factors. And uh, we see that truly the trend is that when you get certified now, you may, your knowledge may become obsolete because different and uh, agile or adaptive approaches come into being and they are applied. And of course, that's where you have the competitive advantage for you to be able to emerge as the champion, maybe for your organization or for your projects, then you should maintain the commitment. Mm -hmm. So earning the PMI certification emphasizes commitment to professional practice. And um, <clears throat> it means you have knowledge, you have skills, you have abilities. And it demonstrates also in terms of relevance that you have tested the rigors of practitioners who uphold rigorous standards based on ongoing research and reflecting on current industry practices. Okay, fine. CAPM. Uh, may I know how many people are connected now? So I should be asking questions when necessary. So we have Mr. Roland. Are you on, Mr. Roland? We have uh, HTC. May I have your name, please, so we can name you properly? <laughs> All right. So uh, 
Maran Daniel, can you get uh, can you get it? Let me give you assign you co-hosting co-host uh, privileges so you could um, demand and maybe relabel those who are on. Okay, so we have HTC. Please give us your name. I'd like to have your name. Then we have uh, Mr. Che. Is not. I mean, he's muted. Okay, please. I want to be sure everybody's following. If you are not following, I don't like to speak in the air. I just want to make sure it should be interactive and intended. Okay, so much to say. There are much volumes to communicate, but I would say it's good that I say just what is relevant to answering some of your key concerns. Maybe some of you are practitioners already. Maybe some of you are halfway to certification. Maybe you are totally new. I should be able to serve each person with the, with the, with the appropriate depth of, of delivery to, today. All right, so the certified associate in project management, I could give an emphasis on that in case somebody doesn't know much. Then we have project management professional PMP. Good. Now we have the program management professional PGMP, portfolio management professional PFMP, the Agile Certified Practitioner, the Risk Management Professional, then Scheduling Professional, and Professional in Business Analysis, PBA. Now, these certifications are quite important. And uh, are there individuals who hold all of these certifications? Yes. Emphatically, yes. I know some of them by name. Oliver, uh, one guy over there in Spain, and then one other person is attempting, grabbing all of them soon. All right, so having all of them, what does, what does it mean? What will it say? First, like the CAPM, what does the CAPM stand for? Certified Associate in Project Management is a foundational certification that validates uh, your fundamentals, mastery of project management, terminologies, concepts, and processes. This makes you a perfect team player. It doesn't say you are at the forefront of leading and directing projects. Let's say chef the project. No, you are not yet. A, 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 I mean, probably you don't have the experience of having led or directed projects or taking a top leadership position on projects. But CAPM validates your understanding in such a way you could be a perfect team player, a perfect uh, project staff. Of course, you have the same knowledge coverage as the PMP. But in terms of experience and practice, uh, CAPM is junior to the PMP. Okay. So CAPM emphasizes knowledge. PMP ex emphasizes the practice, the expertise. Okay, so PMP now. Now, having the CAPM, CAPM is very easy to have with, uh, I think, uh, close to $300. Between $255 to $300, you could acquire your P CAPM. In-house, on your bed, you can write the, P the CAPM. Okay, so it's a self-proctored um, online exam. The PMP certification, good, project management professional. It validates your, an individual's competence in leading and managing projects. Okay, so it makes you stand out to the whole world of professionals. I mean, it means you speak the same language with professionals, people who know how things work, people who understand, people who apply knowledge, people who get things done and achieved. And they know how to achieve things within the, the, the specified timeline, the, the specified budget, and other constraints. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are people who are able to uh, maneuver the complexities of projects of all dimensions. And of course, uh, this is a certification that is designed by practitioners and it is intended for practitioners. So PMP is not an academic oriented degree. It is not uh, intended for those who have acquired so much knowledge on project management? No, but people who have managed projects, who have dealt with projects, people who have experience and who want to deepen and formalize this experience uh, in making themselves, um, you know, endorsable with this certification, okay? So now let's uh, push a little bit forward to see um, the, the, the rigors, the strengths of the PMP. When you are PMP certified, what does it speak? It speaks one, that you have three key uh, domains of competencies to demonstrate. Number one, knowledge competence. Number two, 
performance competence. Number three, um, personal or behavior competence. All right, so from those three perspectives, knowledge, what did I say, knowledge? Uh, knowledge, two, performance, and three, personal. I'm, I'm, right, I'm so from knowledge not... competence, he says that, what do you know about project management? Okay, what do you know? Performance means how, what can you achieve by applying your knowledge? Number three, personal means how do you behave when applying this knowledge and getting results, okay? So perf performance is very important. Performance because how, it answers the how do you get it done? Not just that you have so much knowledge and your brain is swollen. You know, people have so much degrees and uh, it's about delivery. So PMP is about performance. All right, so personal. Personal, the world today is all bound professionally by ethics. So how do you behave? How do you handle conflicts? How do you, you know, so interpersonal skills and so many uh, types of behaviors are being um, honed in such a way that an individual will be able to display himself responsibly in any professional setting. All right, so that is it. And uh, the middle one there, the performance, performance domain is mapped to what we call the PMI talent triangle. You have the technical skills, you have the uh, leadership skills, and then the, the business and strategic, sorry, you have the strategic and business management skills here. So strategic and business management skills. So these three, um, <clears throat> Talent domains specify your performance, the performance for every project professional. So uh, that is what measures an individual's competence in terms of uh, his ability, what you call project management competency development framework. Okay? So your maturity standards. Okay, So benchmarking your maturity as a project manager. Now, how much do you know? In applying project management processes, tailoring methodologies, and all of that, this is technical. What? How do you deal with people? Because project management is about people, people skills, people and uh, uh, people issues, social issues, and all of that. This is the sphere where the project manager is given much capability. And then, strategic and business management skills talk about your organization-wide strategy, understanding of strategy, understanding of aligning to strategy, mission objectives and making sure the project meets the goals for the organization. Understanding key functional values like uh, finance, operations, marketing, all of that, the project manager is quite abreast. All right, so that is what the PMP in a nutshell stands for and demonstrates in terms of competences. So when it says it validates the project, the project team leading and management competencies, that is just it. All right, so how do you obtain the PMP? You can obtain the PMP by uh, Ensuring that uh, you have, well, a baseline educational foundation in uh, as a degree or maybe a degree with three years of work experience, quite okay. An A-level with uh, demonstrated five to seven years of work experience, quite okay. Now, the three years of work experience should be capitalized on a particular project or a sequence of projects where you've carried out amounting to accumulated 4,500 Hours. Okay. So, PMI will require those number of hours, 4,500 hours to be reported in your project experience before your application is processed and validated for the PMP. So, you wouldn't just choose to take the PMP without PMI validating your eligibility to take the exam. So, it is not an academic exam. It is a full degree plus professional experience. All right, so if you would have, if PMI has given some discounts, so if you would have just 480,000 francs instead of 555 that you're seeing as a high range there for non members, you would be able to take the certification now like this. PMI has given some, uh, offered some discounts, reduction from 555 or $545 to $480, including membership. So, that is it, it's for African uh, PMI initiative.
All right, so we do the training, but we would give you further information about um, the different certifications. Here we have the program management professional. The program management professional validates the ability to manage multiple related projects in a coordinated way. So this a program is made up of multiple related projects, okay? Projects that relate, but they are managed together as a group so that they can attain benefits which otherwise you can't attain those benefits except you manage them as a group together. So that is a program. That's what constitutes a program. But a program you would see later on, maybe into the introduction of project management, that a program is not just regarded as a mega project. Some people think when something is very big, when a project is very large, then easily you should give the appellation program management. That is not true. There are characteristics that go with a program as well as there are characteristics that are unique to a project. And then there are characteristics that are very tied to what you call now portfolio, portfolio management. Portfolio management is the centralized management and governance of different uh, projects, programs, and operations grouped together. Okay, so portfolio management validates the capacity to bridge the gap between strategy and implementation. You wouldn't you wouldn't be able to uh, bring all the ensemble of different projects and initiatives that investment initiatives that an organization embarks on, except you have this competence of a portfolio manager. So as a portfolio manager, you stand at the strategic helm of the organization in uh, organizing, defining, aligning, governing, and managing risk across aggregates of projects, programs, portfolio, okay. Um, and uh, support portfolio components and operations. So you are having a strategic mix of projects, programs, operations, and component works that you have to be able to bring them into alignment and bring them uh, to define a strategy to make sure that they meet organizational objectives. So that is what the portfolio manager does. And we see maybe the head of the UBA Africa group could be a portfolio manager. The levels of portfolios and nested portfolios. And you could actually have a portfolio of projects and projects of portfolios within pro portfolios. But we'll talk about that much deeper when probably we get into a proper introduction on project management. All right, so here we go. The risk management professional. Are we still connected? How many of us, please? I can pose the question so I should be able to have. I have only one person not connected. Okay, so I hope I'm talking to my dear colleagues, so I should be able to hear your response. Please, if you have a question, you pick, you can uh, reserve it in a short while. You'll be asking your questions. I'll give you room to ask questions, and then uh, we should be able to run it off as soon as possible in the next few minutes. All right, so HTC is Mr. Menge, Menze Charles. Thank you, Mr. Menge Charles. And uh, we do have who again? Please, for those who are still muted, please kindly unmute yourself. Okay, thank you very much. Let's move on, please. Let me give a fast run on these next few certifications here. You may not see the screen very clearly. It seems a little bit blurred, but I've maximized it as much as I can. Now you have the risk management professional. This is a very important certification. We have individuals who get certified PMP and the next most important certification they should grab, especially when they are working at governance levels in organizations, senior management positions and all of that, where they monitor uh, projects and many programs and many operations and whatever. So this is a very important certification, risk management certification. Individuals go for this as fast as possible. All right, so what does it stand for? What is the strength of it? What does it signify? Okay, as a risk management professional, uh, it validates your ability to identify risks across different uh, networks of projects, programs, portfolios, and enterprise level, okay? So because risk is very, very, um, um, is very important, okay? It's very important because risk is not limited to just a project. Risk could be enterprise level, wide, uh, risk could be at level of operations, at the level of projects, programs, and portfolios. So risk is very important. PMI helps us to see that risk is not just identifying, assessing, and trying to mitigate, but 
PMI says risk is not only negative opportunity or negative, uh, negative situations or negative outcomes or probability for something to happen that is negative. But there is also the probability for something to happen that is positive, and that's what they call positive risk. So two dimensions there, you have the negative risk, which is called threats, or the positive risk, which is called opportunities. So you can actually identify negative or positive uh, risk, and uh, you mitigate threats, that's the negative risk, and you capitalize on enhancing the opportunities, that's positive risk. So that is it. And an individual function in this capacity, of course, would be would stand out to work across with project managers, portfolio managers, program managers, and that is a senior level positions. All right, so you see most organizations, most industries today are risk prone, so risk intensive environments. So we must be able to capture risk. Risk is not just managing a negative outcome. It's about, um, Deriving strategies to, 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 to define opportunities. And when you can capitalize on opportunities, why not? The value of your project increases. Okay, so having this certification is quite easy. Uh, $520 for members and $670 for non-members. All right, PMI ACP. ACP is Agile Certified Practitioner. Good. This validates your knowledge of Agile principles and your skills to implement Agile techniques like Scrum, Kanban, Lean, Extreme Programming, Test-Driven Development. This is a certification that, like I said, is a cream over the traditional PMP certifications. Today, we wouldn't just talk about uh, Agile, or rather, Agile is actually the umbrella name for several certifications and methodologies under that uh, uh, adaptive approach of managing projects, which is called, you have Scrum, you have Kanban, you have Lean. All right, so on that Lean, you definitely could have heard about Lean Six Sigma, Lean, and all of that. Now you have the different shades of certifications on that Lean. Lean Six Sigma is kind of like trying to manage uh, quality-related projects and uh, minimizing waste and uh, ensuring that um, stakeholders or projects meet requirements of stakeholders effectively, okay? as standards are concerned. Now Scrum, Scrum is an agile um, project management approach that um, gives flexibility, okay? Now, most of the agile started in the IT or software engineering industry where um, they, 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 they function on principles. You have 12 principles, four values, and uh, they are driven by uh, primarily meeting the customer expectations on a very, very high note. So putting the customer, let's say what they call customer centricity, okay? So customer is at the heart of this. So meaning that if a change were to take place, agile project management approach would flexibly accommodate the changes across the life cycle of the project than traditional project management. Traditional project management, they will plan, they will scope everything, and then they will plan predictively and then make sure that uh, the work is well scoped. And then all parameters put in place, constraints well attained, and then baseline before they start executing. But that is not the approach here with Scrum or Agile. So Agile is just a sub-technique variant of, rather Scrum is just a sub-technique of Agile, okay? So Agile is an umbrella name for all of this. All right, so agility or adaptability or flexibility is all what this, you know, these uh, techniques are captured. All right, so this is good for all PMP certified pro professionals. In fact, PMI has bundled agile practice guides as a go along with the traditional PMBOK. Okay, so why do I say traditional PMBOK? You will know why. All right, let's move further to in fact, just on that Scrum, Scrum has over nine different certifications. You can imagine that. So uh, Agile Certified Practitioner is just one stand alone umbrella certification under this from PMI. But you have, if you have to go with Scrum, you could have different variants. In fact, in some industries like Agile Alliance, you have different certifications under Agile. So they could have combinations of Agile Scrum, 
Kanban and so many uh, variants. All right, so let's move on to professional and business analysis. Here, this is where the value of a project is highly, highly attained and understood and validated. So here, it validates the ability to define project requirements, to shape project outputs and drive intended outcomes. All right, so with a, a professional and business analysis, you are speaking uh, a, high, a high position in terms of your ability to shape a project output in terms of benefits, benefits management plan, the value of the project, understanding that a project, first of all, is initiated with uh, the business analysis phase, okay? So feasibility, business analysis, business case, and then it leads to a project, gives birth to a project, and where you have the charter of the project. Now, the work that pre-initiates a project is actually carried out by business analysts. And business analysts go beyond just pre-initiating a project. They go beyond into collaborating with project managers at levels of uh, interfaces, like collecting requirements, dealing with uh, issues, uncovering challenges, and preferring solutions to those challenges to meet project objectives and defining and capitalizing on the value that the project has to deliver and making sure that they derive what we call a, a benefits management structure that would deliver the intended value or benefits to the, of the project to the organization and stakeholders. All right, so this certification is quite good, quite uh, open and uh, highly valued by every PMP professional. If you have PMP, you should quickly navigate towards at obtaining this. Why this is essential, you will know more when we probably have a formal introduction to project management. Okay, so speaking further to, to on the, the certification relevance, we, we have the scheduling professional. This is one of the eight last certifications, but not the least. It validates your ability to design project schedules to manage activities, resources, dependencies, and project outcomes. Well, these are professionals who are highly specialized, okay? So a standalone certification on scheduling, even though scheduling is a whole chapter in project management, would validate your ability to go further using software, using tools, and baselining project model that will help. It's highly valued. At times, scheduling professionals would serve in, on a consultative basis on projects. And definitely they are paid very high and paid higher than even project managers who stand for long hours and months on the project. So the higher you go specialize, the more professional you stand out. And that is what this certification will do for anyone. So you have things like Microsoft Project, which are basic softwares for managing project schedules and all of that. And uh, you have Primavera P6, basic and advanced. And you have a couple of industry uh, software tools to schedule and design your project uh, plan, okay? So this is good. Well, in a, in a short two minutes, I should be able to ask a few questions about uh, the importance of project management from three perspectives. One, as an individual, how does project management help you? Well, at the level of an organization, maybe you are in an organization, from organizational perspectives, how is it relevant? All right, okay. You also live in a nation where in an economy like Cameroon, good. As an emerging economy, Africa in, in particular, you can appreciate that the industry is projectizing, okay? So uh, that's what you have. Work is no longer defined as static work description. When somebody picks up a job, they give you a work description where it specifies uh, roles, responsibilities, activities, and whatever you have to do, and timelines and goals. That's not it any further. Now we're dealing with the project economy where work is defined more like a dynamic, initiative with a, 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 a term-based duration where you have the start and the end and it has to meet an objective. 
So that is it. That's what the project is. A temporary endeavor where it's undertaken to create a unique product, service, or resort. Now, that is what organizations are investing, investing billions to acquire these standards and to maintain a competitive stand over um, in the industries where they are. And because the disruptive forces that are shaping and reshaping the way the economy and industry will play, this is why project management would find its relevance. And for anyone that is getting certified, uh, there is much relevance for you. There is much, there's a big future ahead. Okay, so work is turning to be more projectized than just the traditional way of doing things. All right, so if you get certified as an individual, well, project management stands you out, PMP stands you out uh, in the perspective of you knowing how to shape your own projects, knowing how to uh, manage your own schedules, of course. You definitely have a strategic insight and foresight on how to put things together, organize, align, and make sure that things get achieved. Okay, so finally, you have a kind of uh, formalized approach, okay? It gives you, if it formats your mind, there is a thing that does, project management does to us beyond just acquiring knowledge. It, it gives you a formal way, I mean, a standardized approach to think and to take action in a way, all right? It, it makes you know how to analyze op, or, uh, alternative objectives and see how to attain. All right, so at the level of an organization, let's just read what you see on the screen. We have effective project management, uh, helping individuals and groups and public and private organizations to meet business objectives, satisfy stakeholder expectations, uh, give you a more predictability in your outcomes, increase chances of success, delivering right products at the right time, resolving problems and issues, responding to risks in a timely manner, optimizing the use of organizational resources, identify, recover, and terminate failing projects. If projects are failing, there is a way, project management will give you the standards for you to know how to identify, to recover, or terminate. Not just keep pumping money into an initiative that may, you know, is already truncated, its objectives are failed. But people who don't know how to calculate the failure or do the forecasts, all of this, you find it in project management. Manages constraints, like scope schedule, quality cost resources, effectively and balancing the competing nature of these constraints on projects to increase the probability of project success and outcome. It manages change in a better manner, knowing that projects are initiated for the purpose of moving an organization from one state to another. So that's change management. So bringing more value, defining more value. So in the value delivery stream, organizations embark on projects to move from one current state to what you call future state. All right, so this is very important. Poorly managed projects or the absence of project management may result in missed deadlines, cost overruns, poor quality, rework, uncontrolled expansion of the project, loss of reputation for the organization, unsatisfied stakeholders, of course, and failure to achieving the objectives for which the project was undertaken. Now here we're going to put a pause and I would like to welcome your one or two opinions in terms of comments, actions, reactions, questions. Let us have a better way to see it. All right, so kindly unmute your mic in case you have to ask a question, please. All right, in terms of training, we do have, um, how do we train? Well, we, project management is, um, um, is a domain where many people want to get certified, but they don't know where to and how to. So we offer this training. We've been offering this training for over years, over years. And uh, we want to have uh, candidates know that when you come to take the certification here, we don't just train towards uh, getting people certified. We have to give you more than just the certification requirements, okay? We give you the practice, the philosophy, and the, the practical push to becoming a project manager. That is at the core um, of our training objective. 
to make sure that you become a real project manager. That is important. Number two, we ensure that uh, you are exposed or know the relevance, the insights, and how you can chart value and chart progress with your certification. And uh, coming across with networks of professionals, know how to uh, increase your networking potential, okay? So the third objective in our training is to ensure that we train you in a way you are confident in making your certification at the first trial or first attempt. Most people write certifications or take PMP over and over, over and over. Well, they fail because um, they probably are not project managers. That's the first thing. They didn't take it the project approach. They didn't take it the practitioner approach. Knowing what project management or PMP stands for, it is not, it's beyond reading. It's beyond acquainting yourself with a, a body of knowledge. It's about practice, understanding the philosophy of applying applying best practices, okay, making decisions, and uh, that is it. Most people who write and fail, I always tell them, if you fail the PMP exam, it means you were not a project manager. Or maybe you were, you were fooled to take it uh, intended as, uh, uh, you know, an academic something. So the questions are highly scenario-based questions stemming from, from a core practice uh, philosophy. Okay, so as a project manager, what will you do? So there are multiple choice questions, but they carry with it the elements, okay, the elements of a practitioner. So PMP is designed by the practitioner and it is intended for practitioners. So that is such an example. All right, so can somebody uh, ask his questions to get clarified on any point? Because we would be ending the webinar in a short while. Uh, okay, yes, sir. Then please let me find out how much does your training cost? All right, so that is fine. We do offer PMP in uh, in a bundle with other certifications, and also as a standalone certification. So PMP could have a cost ranging from two hundred and thirty thousand to six hundred and eighty-five thousand. So you have, will I say two hundred and thirty? Yes, because you have path one. Path one is uh, 195,000 plus registration of 35,000, making 230. Path two, so path one is just PMP. PMP accelerated one month, okay? So path two, uh, we take you PMP and deepen you experience plus Agile, Agile Scrum. So those two certifications can go uh, 325 plus 35 means 360. All right, so path three is a full bundle with PMP Agile, so path two plus MS project and Excel uh, project reporting dashboards, okay? So uh, why that path three is quite important is weightful because um, beyond paying a, a million and 80,000, I think, you are discounted 40% off and you pay 650,000 plus 35,000 registration makes 685,000. Now that gives you uh, beyond uh, complete skills, okay? Complete skills uh, beyond the PMP. So you have the PMP, yes. You have the traditional and, and modern approaches to manage projects as the Agile, you are covered. Then you have on top of that Microsoft project planning skills and scheduling, making sure that you can attain, you can plan a project effectively and deliver it number three or four, uh, ensuring that you have project reporting, uh, data analy analytics skills of a project manager to report, okay? And to analyze project worksheets effectively. Perfect, that is a combination and that's how we offer it. All right, thank you very much, sir. All right, you're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Vanga. <laughs> okay, thank you. If uh, you have further questions, we would maybe address that you could address that to management or any other time I have the opportunity to answer the questions fine. For now, because of time, we would be pausing. All right. Thank you again and I uh, hope to 
No, thank you very okay. much. Sir. I think it was wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. We offer the certification online as well. So most of our training is online oriented now. So uh, wherever you are, if you like to take the certification, we could um, get you on board. Yes, yes, sir. Please just just permit me to find out. It's um, it's it's, it's a two hundred and um. 280,000 francs package accompanied by some material? Yeah, uh, the material that we offer to you are digital copies, soft copies. Yes, we offer you soft copy materials plus our handouts and uh, several other resources that will enable you to get the exam. Because once you register at our center and you are a student, we ensure that our responsibility is to make you to, 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 get, to obtain your PMP on the go and it should be once all right so that is it we offer you soft copies and we offer you a lot of uh, uh simulation practice tests exams exam standards and um a lot of resources that will enable you go through okay so someone asked me a question which uh is do you, do you i mean do you also have a service which can which can guide people to, to just register i mean for for people who are not part of your uh, okay, so they not registered with you. Is there a way anybody can can come to you for guidance on the registration? Yes, definitely we do. We have uh, we have uh, just a certification revision workshop that is organized for those who have been studying, preparing for the PMP, mm -hmm. and so we can process the application, and uh, we also um, help them with a lot of standard exam questions and preparation guides towards the certification. They had paid 60,000 francs plus um, the processing fee, application fee, which is uh, normally 25,000. So okay. now if you don't want to take that path, then the only one, if you want that we should uh, construct your application because processing your application to PMI usually takes much time and yes. some technical aspects. So uh, if you don't report it properly, you may not meet the eligibility for you to go for the exam. So we construct that for 25,000 francs and okay. uh, <clears throat> you supply your CV and we give you a project experience worksheet where you can fill and then we construct that. And, uh, and or you register with us to just have our resources at your disposal without attending our workshops and uh, training uh, guidance sessions. So like I said, the workshop element, 60,000, because there will be three sessions where you attend, either online or face-to-face. -face. You would pay 60,000 francs, then pay 25,000 for processing your application. That's 85,000. 85, Plus uh, standard preparation. Yes, standard exam preparation. So we give you the workshop, assuming that you have been studying, you understand, we will just come to the application, the practice, and give you technical questions, guidelines, do solution analysis, and so many things. And of course, a standard case study where we could uh, preview uh, lessons learned over the chapters. And then you go okay. now for the certification. That is quite just three sessions uh, okay. of uh, three, three hours, making nine hours. Uh, please, sir, one more question. Yes, I think I am satisfied with this uh, with this particular last uh, last last question because there were so many of my friends who who wanted who wanted to to come in with uh, I mean who needed assistance with the registration formalities and all of those. Okay, good, good. <laughs> then um, one one more question is uh, yeah. is is it uh, is it uh, I mean do you have a center where one can come in to write because we know in this country we have very rely on reliable internet connection and so okay other. yes possibly yes we do we do our center is well equipped we have uh, multimedia facilities and test taking facilities as well so our center even though it's not pmi uh center for pmi exams but we do offer uh, tests accommodation for TOEFL, IELTS, and all of that but now you know PMI has opened the exam to online self proctored So you could write from the comfort of your home or your office. And of course, if you like to take it still at our center, you could either choose to go to uh, Prometric uh, registered centers where PMI actually formerly had, or our students have been taking the, the exams so that in case for reliability of uh, internet and uh, uh, power, 
uh, you know, lack of power outages or something, then that's fine. But if you like to come to our center, fine, we can also set up the, uh, the configuration and proctoring instructions for you to go through the exam. Since the exam has been given a self-proctored mode, it's quite easy. So we can help that out. Okay, thank you very much. Sir. Uh, yes. you are, is your center only in Douala? Or no, you are, we are in Douala, Yaoundé, physically open in Douala, Yaoundé, Bamenda, Boya, temporarily based on the uh, availability of students. And uh, we go more online and in these two centers for now. Okay. So right. Anytime thank you can meet us at our center in Douala, uh, we are at uh, the British Language Institute building opposite Canal de Aqua. And Yaoundé opposite the Ministry of Communication. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. All right. Thank you. We'll meet again. Have a great day. Thank you very much. Hello, Daniel. Yes, sir. I do have some uh, candidates for class. I think I wouldn't know whether you are at the center. No, no, I'm not at the center. Okay. All right. So let me pause.